and I'm what's colloquially known as an openly gay politician. It took me nine years before I was prepared to have this photo taken, partly because I think politician family photos are naff, but mostly because I did not want my family exposed to the public debate that ensues around our families. I've been in politics for 10 years. I've had to explain a lot of interesting things to my colleagues, including where the babies come from. I'm not going into that tonight. But I've also been asked lots of other questions. I've been asked, who's the real mum? Where is the dad? Am I worried about whether my kids are going to be bullied? Am I worried about whether they're going to be gay too? There's nothing quite like having your family and your parenting skills discussed in the media and in the parliament. But this is the political minefield that gay families deal with every day in this state. We need to get real about families. They're very diverse. They're not just mum and dad and two kids. What makes them important is the love that they give to one another and the care they provide within our society. That's what makes them important. There are some politicians who get it. There are some who are prepared to look after all families, to stand up and to speak out, to change the law if required to remove discrimination. And of course there are also politicians who don't get it. Most recently in New South Wales we had a very good example of this. Gaby Baby is a lovely film about kids with gay parents. The New South Wales government decided to duck for cover when the Daily Telegraph ran this and they banned it from being showed in school time. The simple reality is that many of our lawmakers just want the gays to go away. If we don't think about it, hopefully they will. I'm not sure that's really working for them. Uh, <laughs> the gays are everywhere, in our schools, in our, in our homes, in our families, hosting TV shows, winning Olympic gold even being elected to parliament. <laughs> Our Premier talked about tolerance with parameters when this furor erupted. I'm not sure what the parameters of tolerance really are. Is it okay to be gay but only after school? And is it okay, <laughs> is it okay to be gay but only when the Daily Telegraph isn't looking? <laughs> I got this letter from a, from a mother who was very distressed and this is what the message she heard. Our families are unacceptable, they're not normal, they're tacitly de deviant and they're therefore worthless. That is the message that gay parents and their kids hear when this debate happens. Of course there are politicians who are never going to support gay families. Fred Nile has spent 20 years fighting every single bit of law reform in this state for the very, very basic reason he does not believe that homosexuality should be considered normal. Him and his supporters and defenders of the traditional family make these arguments. Gay equals bad. Gay is a lifestyle choice that leads to unhappiness, premature death, drug abuse. If we talk about it, people will become gay and we're all on the road to ruin. They also make the argument that gay families make their kids gay. <laughs> Ignoring the fact, of course, that my parents were straight, still gay. The, real, the reality is your parents don't make you gay and they also don't make you heterosexual. <laughs> the other argument that's also made is about religious freedom. Australia is wonderful because we live in a multicultural and multi-faith society. Everyone should be free to practice their religion. But as citizens, we also live in a secular society where we should be able to live free of discrimination. I get a lot of emails every year. They ask me to ban, stop, discourage any programs that actually support gay families or LGBTI young people. Some of this stuff is quite genuine, the things people send me. But a lot of it is simply bad grammar and very, very offensive. You cannot ignore this. I get a lot of free advice. My kids have no male role models. My, my daughters are going to be uh, promiscuous. My son is going to be gender confused. I'm clearly, clearly killing my family. But these debates cannot be seen in a vacuum. They are felt personally and they are felt deeply. To ignore the evidence of discrimination and its impact is very harmful. Bullying, self-harm, um, homelessness are all too real. Too many people have lost their lives through homophobia and the way that we talk about these things. Yep, I got this last week. Um, but we have to be serious about it. We have to actually stand up for it. Too many people are unable to do so. But the news is also really good. Decades of law reform have now seen um, gay families actually have most of the discrimination removed out of the law. We're here, we're queer, we're in our schools and we actually have a lot of community acceptance and that's, that is a very, very good thing. But to be equal 
is to say that homosexuality is normal. Kids like these need to grow up in families that say that their families are normal and that their families are worthy. The question for our politicians is when are they going to stop politicking and when are they going to show leadership? When are they going to say that all families are precious, that all families are worthy of respect, that all families should be treated equally, even the gay ones? Thanks very much. <laughs>